Hello, and welcome to Cloud of Witnesses, Journey with the Saints, a dynamic, full-cast retelling of the lives of the saints. Every episode is written, recorded, and produced by our team of Orthodox Christians here in sunny San Diego, California. So brew yourself a hot cup of tea, grab yourself some popcorn, and enjoy this edifying voyage on today's episode of Cloud of Witnesses, Journey with the Saints. Hi, this is Nick. Hey, this is Jeremy. And welcome to Cloud of Witnesses. Journey with the Saints. Guys, we have a really exciting episode, The Life of St. Cecilia, the patroness of liturgical and church music. And don't let that subject matter maybe fool you. This is a powerhouse of a story. Her witness is amazing. We're going to jump straight into it. But before we do, real quick, we just wanted to let you know that for a mere 4 or $10 a month, you can help us attain our very own sound equipment so that we can continue bringing you these high-quality renditions of the lives of the saints. If you feel so inspired, please, please consider donating at patreon.com slash cloudofwitnessesradio. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n patreon.com slash cloudofwitnessesradio. Or you could just check the link in our YouTube description. Thank you. So, without any further ado, please enjoy our feature-length episode on the life and witness of St. Cecilia. Enjoy. Cecilia was born in Rome at the close of the 2nd century to wealthy and illustrious parents who were idolaters. I shall name her Cecilia. But honey, doesn't that mean one who cannot see? Yet this shall be her name. Hearing the gospel preach, Cecilia came to believe in Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy. And according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgression. She filled her days with fervent prayer and acts of charity to those in need. So great was her devotion to Christ that she resolved to preserve her virginity for him. Cecilia, that Cornelius over there is a beautiful young man. Oh, mother, you know I'm not interested. I've already betrothed myself to Christ. Your father and I have other plans. For many years, Cecilia's mother continued to pressure Cecilia to enter into marriage, and after yet another argument with her mother, we find Cecilia praying in church. To thee alone, O Lord my God, I pledge myself, body, mind, soul, and spirit, that I may live a chaste and sober life to the glory of thy most holy name. Amen. Without her knowledge and against her will, her parents have betrothed her to a highly eligible young man. Daughter, you will be pleased to learn we have arranged a marriage for you, a bridegroom of noble birth named Valerian. But father, I have pledged to live a life of virginity, dedicated to Christ alone. Cecilia, enough of this Christian God of yours. Go at once to array yourself in this fine raiment and jewelry to meet your future husband now. As the providence of God would have it, Cecilia was married. That night, as the newly wed couple approached the bridal chamber, Cecilia's new husband drew near to her and said, Cecilia, I've heard rumors that it was not your will to enter into marriage with me. Valerian, you are a very nice man, but the rumors are true. I have devoted myself to Christ God. But Cecilia, we're married. We can't undo this now. Valerian, an angel has been sent to defend my virginity. 
If you touch me, he will slay you at once. I say this to protect you. I've heard that your Christian God works many wonders. Grant that I may see this angel. You cannot see the angel because you do not know the true God. You will not be able to see the angel until you are cleansed from the impurity of unbelief. Cleansed? But how may I be cleansed? Bishop Urban is able to cleanse the impious by holy baptism. Take the Appian Way, and when you come upon paupers, say to them, Cecilia asks that you take me to the elder Urban, who is hiding from the persecution in a cave. He will instruct you in the Christian faith, and when he has baptized you, return to me. Then you shall see the angel and receive whatever you desire of him. Cecilia, this is very hard for me to believe, but your devotion has inspired me. I will go see this Bishop Urban to see how I may be cleansed. Valerian set out in search of Bishop Urban along the Appian Way, as his bride had instructed him, and found the paupers who knew Cecilia well, for she often gave them alms. <coughs> uh, yes, the great Bishop Urban. <coughs> we, we can take you to him. <coughs> he lives in the caves outside of town, away from the authorities. <coughs> come, come, follow me. <coughs> Come, Bishop Urban, he lives just a little farther around the corner, inside this cave. <laughs> My child, you have come to this place to be purified of the darkness of unbelief. It was divine providence through the handmaiden of God, Cecilia, your wife. Cecilia spoke to me about angels. What is that all about? I find this hard to believe. Before the Lord God Almighty created the stars, he created the first lights, the angelic powers. Speak to me about Christ that Cecilia has told me about. Wasn't he a simple man? This Christ of whom you speak and are very curious about is none other than the God Almighty, the Creator, the Maker of heaven and earth. Do you mean to say, Bishop, that this man Jesus is God? God in the flesh, who was crucified. After Holy Urban prayed and reasoned with Valerian for some time, Valerian's heart began to soften. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, in whom we live and move and have our being. Do you believe, child, that these things are true? Truly, Bishop, there is nothing beneath heaven more certain than this confession. I wish to be baptized. After baptizing him, Bishop Urban sent Valerian back to his holy bride Cecilia, and he found her praying. Seeing an angel of indescribable beauty standing beside her, he exclaimed, Glory to God in the highest! Blessed be his holy name always and forever. Now I know you are truly my brother in Christ, dear Valerian. Let us pray the Lord may grant us wisdom and discernment to know his will and the strength to do it. The angel was holding two crowns of red roses and white lilies. Placing the wreaths on their heads, he said, Guard these wreaths by keeping your hearts pure 
and your bodies undefiled. I have brought them from paradise, and no one can see them unless they, like you, are lovers of chastity. God revealed me to you, Valerian, because you have agreed to preserve your purity. He wants you to have what you desire. No one is dearer to me than my brother Tibertius. I asked the Lord to deliver him from the worship of idols and convert him as he converted me. Your request is pleasing to God and shall be granted. Soon after this, Tibertius providentially came to visit his brother. When he entered the house, he noticed the intense fragrance of roses and lilies. Such a heavenly smell. From where does it come? You can perceive this sweet fragrance, my beloved brother, because I've prayed to God for you, asking you be deemed worthy to receive an unfading crown and come to love him whose blood is red like a rose and whose flesh like a white lily. Am I dreaming? Or are you really telling me this? Until now, we have been living as if in a dream, worshipping false gods and unclean demons. But now, now we can walk in God's truth and grace. Come, brother, so that Cecilia and I may teach you the divine doctrines of the Christian faith. The wise elder further expounded on the mysteries of the Christian faith, and his teachings also permeated the soul of Tiberius. After his baptism, Tiberius was deemed worthy of such grace that he saw holy angels and conversed with them. Dear Tiberius, all the celestial hosts celebrate to see another sinner repent and come to the true faith. Father Urban, what is this I see? I see young men clad in brilliant garments all around us. Yes, dear child, you have been cleansed from the impurity of unbelief and your spiritual eyes have been opened. You see the cloud of witnesses which surrounds us. Then the brothers distributed their inheritance to the poor and took care of the sick, widows, and orphans. In addition to these God-pleasing works, Valerian and Tibertius reverently buried the holy martyrs who had been tortured during the terrible persecution of Christians. This was reported to Almachius, the prefect of the city, who hated and persecuted Christians, who ordered that the brothers be arrested and brought to trial. Why do you dishonor your noble estate and give burial to those outcasts who have been put to death for transgressing against the emperor? Have you fallen into the same error as they have? Renounce Christ and offer sacrifice to the gods. But the brothers refuse. Then Almachius ordered the brothers to be scourged without mercy. Valerian urged the Christians not to fear torments, but to stand firm for Christ. In order to prevent the brothers from influencing the people, Almachius ordered that the martyrs be taken outside the city and executed there. The soldiers accompanying the martyrs to execution were commanded by Maximus. He was amazed at the courage of the saints and asked them, Do you not fear death? We are exchanging this temporal life for everlasting life. Yes, if it were not so, we would not rejoice at the thought of losing our lives in this fleeting world. Maximus wanted to learn the Christian teaching in detail. He took Valerian and Tibertius to his own house and conversed with them all night. When she heard of this, Cecilia went with the priest to Maximus. Then he and his entire family were baptized. 
The next day, on their way to execution, Cecilia exhorted the brothers, Be brave, soldiers of the Lord. Put on the garment of light and complete your contest. You have fought the good fight. Depart now to receive the crown of righteousness, which our Lord shall bestow upon you. The brothers hastened to the place of execution. When Valerian and Tiberius were beheaded, Maximus confessed, I behold God's angels shining like the sun. They have taken the souls of the brother martyrs to heaven in great honor. At this, many heathens believed in Jesus Christ. Learning of what transpired, Amalchius, enraged, commanded that Maximus be beaten mercilessly with rods. The Roman commander turned martyr, then surrendered his soul into the hands of the Lord. Cecilia gathered the remains of Valerian, Tiberius, and Maximus and gave them an honorable burial. Now that these wretched Christians are done with, we shall confiscate their property. We shall pluck every valuable, every trinket from their carcasses. Almachius, I'm sorry to tell you, but we've recently received news that Cecilia, Valerian's wife, has given all their property to the poor. What? Portions of their land were to be mine! I wish it wasn't true, but not only this, but through their martyrdom and Cecilia's teaching, around 400 people have been converted to the Christian faith. This is an outrage! Bring this woman, Cecilia, to court at once! And so, the interrogation of Cecilia soon began. Do you not know, wretch, that the Emperor has given me power to destroy you, or to grant you life? You lie, Almachius, when you say that you have power to grant life. You ought to have said you only have power to put to death. While you can slay, you can give life to no one. Sacrifice to the gods and renounce Christ. Then... You will be set free. By God's grace, I am prepared to die for Christ. Then you shall die. Guards, send this Cecilia to the steam chamber. Prefect Amalchius, it's been three days of torture. And even with all the smoke, steam, and boiling water, she's still alive? I've had enough of this nonsense. Send her to the executioner to be beheaded. And so, later that day, the executioner struck her neck three times with the sword, but failing to sever her head from her body only managed to wound the maiden. Prefect, by some strange magic, the beheading failed, and now she lays in bed, bleeding, and she sings. Then just leave her to die, so that she may go to her God. The holy martyr lived three more days in full consciousness while encouraging those around her. She endured her suffering with hymns of praise on her lips and thanksgiving in her heart. Cecilia was buried with reverence and lauded for her life of devotion and holy virtue. Because of her hymnody and singing in the midst of such suffering, Saint Cecilia is regarded as the patron saint of church music. Saint John Chrysostom extols the benefits of sacred music and shows how strongly the fire of divine love is kindled in the soul by devout psalmody. <laughs>